if, with dedicated funding, we could support new heritage audiences to develop new skills and knowledge? That was a question we started to ask in 2011 with the Doctor Monument. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will have a glimpse of what we did, how we did it, and what we've learned along the way. Now, Doctor Monument has been running on and off since 1991, and its key role is to support communities to engage with their local heritage and archaeology. One of the most important aspects of our Doctor Monument is that it's community-led, and as such, no project is the same. It involves helping with a variety of tasks, from funding bids or scheduled monument consent forms, uh, right up to large-scale landscape survey. And in 2011, we were fortunate enough to get um, from HLF, as was, Historic Scotland, as was, and LIDA, um, some large funding bids to deliver a five-year project working throughout Scotland, from Shetland down to Dumfries and Galloway. And it was a game-changer for a Doctor Monument, because suddenly we had staff and resources, not only to go up to groups, but we could also start to support the groups on a more long-term basis. And you can see here the sort of variation of sites that communities approached us with. And actually one of our strengths as an organisation is our ability to work on a high variety of site types. Because we never go into situations where we tell people what heritage is and what their heritage is. It's not up to us to define for them what heritage can be. Now with our enhanced funding in 2011, we had two strands of work. We were originally meant to complete 40 traditional projects, that is projects which work with the already engaged audience, um, sort of those traditional heritage audiences. And in addition to those um, projects, we also wanted to do 15 what we called then outreach projects or new audience projects. And we were greatly influenced by the work of Rachel Kiddy um, in Bristol with homelessness archaeology for her PhD and her subsequent work. Um, and with this element of ADOPT, we had target audience that we developed with our funders um, to develop individual projects around. So we were developing projects focusing on those particular audiences. And this element of ADOPT is more professionally led because we actually created the project, I suppose, and then took the project idea to a target project partner um, who was already working or engaged with, well, who was already working <coughs> with that target audience we were keen to work with ourselves. And our first project was Digging the Scene, working in partnership with Christ the Sky Light Edinburgh to record hidden commercial signage in Edinburgh Old Town. One of the biggest lessons we learned on this project was that our wonderful participants had completely different skill sets to the traditional volunteer. They'd left school early, they had chaotic lives, they had minimal like, IT skills or um, minimal access to IT facilities. And as such, um, the original volume of data collection we had expected to collect was actually had to be reframed. It hadn't been realistic, our data collection goals that we had set. Um, and actually, that was really a, a big point for us because we realised that we had to design these projects more loosely. We had to develop a re reactive methodology and we had to react to the person who was in front of us. Digging the scene was a success. It ran for nearly 20 workshops with participants saying how they enjoyed how friendly and welcoming it was. It was interesting and they learnt new skills like confidence with cameras and creating newsletters. And these are really obvious things for us, but they were massive for our volunteers. And we've gone on to do two other projects with Crisis and they keep coming back to us because they recognise we have quite a unique skill set we can deploy when working with their volunteers. So taking these lessons learnt, we started to develop other projects, one of which, which was Women at War. Now this project worked with Rochelle's Women's Aid to research the role of women at a World War II airbase, and it created a baseline record of a regionally important at-risk site. This is a summary of what we did, but when we designed the project, we wanted to make sure there were no barriers to participation. So we got a bit of extra funding in to ensure that we could pay for volunteer travel, food, PPE and extra equipment. I even had a budget for childcare provision should my volunteers want to take it up. So there was absolutely no barrier to get them involved. Um, and again, we had a very reactive methodology. We reacted to some of the participants' interests or um, 
passions for other activities or products. So one of our volunteers was really keen on haiku poetry. So one of our outputs was haiku poetry about our military base. Mine was awful, but theirs was great. But it's just like if using like their interests and passion and adapting it for our heritage project. And when we talk about the point of doing these type of projects, women at war is why we should be doing this work. We could see that there was a positive change in the confidence of the participants, observed by me who was delivering the workshops but also by the Women's Aid support workers who worked alongside us to deliver the project. Our participants were suddenly taking the lead in other workshops that Women's Aid were delivering. They were sharing their knowledge of the, the site and of the project with other Women's Aid participants. One participant had been relocated to this area for her own safety, and she said the project had helped her to explore and develop an appreciation for the new landscape she just suddenly found herself living in. And the, all the participants said that they re suddenly realised that archaeology wasn't just castles. It wasn't just these high stated sites that you go and visit perhaps um, every now and again. It could be much more mundane, but relatable and tangible features that they could identify with. And these are large scale projects I've just talked about, but it should be you know, acknowledged that small interventions can be just as meaningful. The hours, like three hours spent with children living in care, can be just as meaningful as a 20-week project. Our work with Bernardo's in Falkirk highlighted this. We worked with young people to show that they were living on a really, really unique World Heritage Site. In fact, they were living within some of the best preserved sections of this World Heritage Site. And they could start to take pride in their local area because it was absolutely phenomenally um, important in terms of archaeology, if you like Roman stuff. So, this phase of the Doctor Monument finished in 2017, but we realised that we were having some really positive impacts um, with the people that we were working with, and we wanted to go further. Alongside this, we had been retained by Scottish Waterways Trust to work on their Canal College scheme, using cultural and natural heritage to develop employability skills for 16 to 25 year olds. Now with Canal College, 72% of Canal College graduates go on to either employment, further training or education. And I think that sort of data and statistics which shows that taking part of these projects works. It can really change an individual's life. So thinking about the skills that we as an organisation have developed over this time since 2011 and the impact or outcomes we know our volunteers can leave with, provided we design the right project for them, We've developed a new programme of work called Attainment Through Archaeology. Now, we wanted to develop a programme that was still reactive to the person that was in front of us, but have it a little bit more structured so we could start to support a participant to lead with tangible outcomes. And by, through funding from Historic Environment Scotland and the Robertson's Trust, we are developing a suite of engagement opportunities that will support young, marginalised individuals develop new skills that will aid them in their next steps in life. And importantly, we've got quite a vigorous evaluation strategy now on this site, so we can start to collect the baseline data and record the baseline change in our participants as they start to take part in our activity. And that's really, really crucial. Our first big project has been exploring Old Ockenleck. It's an ex-industrial centre, it scores very high on the Scottish Index for multiple deprivation. And our amazing young people um, were actually, they, they got in touch, we got to work with them because they weren't attending school. They had high absent rates. And they were on the verge of leaving school with no, nothing on the horizon, with no work placement set up. So last year we did a five-week programme with the idea that if we could help them stick with a five-week um, heritage programme, we could then help, may potentially help them stick with their next work placement. And with this first project, we managed to get 54% of our young people attending about 80 or 90% of the workshops. And I thought that was quite low, but I've since talked to youth workers who said that's a really great retention result. And you think these people are not attending school, but they keep coming back um, to our projects, although I did buy donuts, so maybe that was, that was right. So, these are the sort of um, skills that we did with um, our young people in Ockenleck. 
And this is the sort of um, skills that they can demonstrate, really, by taking part in these activities, which hopefully will all help them you know, stick with their next work, um, work placement. But it's crucial that we observe, we observe and record the baseline change in our young people. And we could, as we said, and we could see that they were becoming more confident through our programme, they were taking ownership in their work, and they demonstrated that they could work in a team or they could work independently. And their teacher was taken by surprise, that they stuck at it, that they keep coming back. Um, and particularly when the young people as well said, I, the wor workshops were nay bad, which I think was quite a good feedback. <laughs> so are we having an impact? Well, with attainment, um, I'm still in touch with their teacher, um, and the youth support worker that's also working with them. And most of the young people had a work placement lined up and they were committed to doing it. it. So they went from young people to say who weren't attending school to then suddenly considering, actually, I do want to go on and do a work placement. I do want to actually try and achieve something a bit beyond just leaving school. I need to check in with their teacher, but the value of having a three-year project is that I will be able to keep going back to our project contacts to see how those young people are. I'm hoping by the end of year two, I will not know how they are because they've left school, they've left the support system, and they've actually gone on to work or further education. So, I think we are having an impact. I think that at whatever scale of intervention your engagement is at, you have the potential to change worldviews, to change lives. With Ockenlec, we were one cog in a wheel of support for these young people, but we shouldn't underestimate the impact that our work can have on a young person's mind. You can be the change, and I think we've seen that again and again, and again today. We're just at the start of um, ATA, and at the moment we are focused on youth audiences, but what I hope to do going forward is to expand into other age demographics. And to start again focusing in on particular potential demographics and seeing if these models of intervention can help support someone um, to, to next positive steps. Going back to ADOPT, it didn't finish in 2017. It kept going because we need, we're needed in Scotland and there's a clear need and um, belief that ADOPT's monument, I think, it is, is a good thing for Scottish archaeology. We were delighted in January to get awarded five years of funding from Historic Environment Scotland to continue doing Adopt a Monument. And that meant so much to us that our National Heritage Agency is supporting us to go forward in that way. Um, ATA will be a huge part of that five years, and what we're hopefully going to, go to do is start to combine this element of work with the more traditional elements of our work, so like monument stewardship, get our young people out to start looking at stewardship issues on site. We've diversified beyond our HES funding, um, and we have managed to actually tap into more um, socially focused funding. Robertson's Trust isn't a traditional heritage funder, and we've got two other funders. Again, we don't traditionally fund heritage projects, but they're funding us because of our social impacts that we're hopefully going to get from our projects. We know our projects have results. We know that by designing the project around the participant and by matching activities around the desired outputs, that we can support a participant to a positive destination. And we're really passionate as an organisation to continue our development within this line of work because we really believe that archaeology and heritage engagement can change lives. Thank you.